Welcome to Chapter 4, Energy. This unit would be composed of a number of videos. The first one is going to be short and it's going to say what is energy. So let's go right in. What is energy? Energy is the ability to cause change. You can also think of it as the ability to do work. However, work has a very specific meaning in physics, so I'd like to say it could cause change. Energy can change the object itself or its surrounding. Look out the window. During the day, the sun gives out light and heat energy. At night, street lamps use electrical energy to light our way. When a car drives by, it is being powered most likely by gasoline, a type of stored energy. And the food we eat contains energy. Those Girl Scout cookies have energy to work and listen to this video. Energy is measured in joules. Just as we use Newton's, we use joules for energy. Joules are really kilogram meters squared over seconds squared. So do we want to use it every time? No. We want to say joules. You have got to see this video. It's kind of a cute video about energy and the ability to do work. And it talks about conservation of mass and energy. In a closed system, remember that's a system that uh, you're not getting energy, or you're not taking it away. So in a closed system, energy and mass can neither be created nor destroyed. However, it can change forms from kinetic to chemical or even matter to energy. That's what we call nuclear energy there. And now I'll play the video. What is energy? Energy is the ability to do work the ability to cause motion and change. To understand the fundamental facts of energy, you must have a working knowledge of its terminology. From atoms down to x-ray, sing along and learn with me the ABCs and XYZs of energy. What kinds of energy are there? There's nuclear, mechanical, and solar energy, and electrical, and chemical, and radiant, and heat. There's light, and there's magnetic, and that's quite enough for me, cause that makes nine different kinds of energy. With the discovery of atomic energy, scientists have found that matter can be changed into energy, and energy can be changed into matter. But even though matter and energy may change their forms, the total amount in the universe remains the same. The law of conservation, speaking universally, says you can't increase or decrease the amount of energy. Though energy may change its form and does it constantly, you can't increase or decrease the quantity. change its form and does it constantly you can't increase or decrease the quantity now that you've seen the video let's go back to that review of the forms of energy some forms of energy are electrical chemical radiant that would be light thermal heat, which is heat, and mechanical types of energy. Energy can change between these forms. So we have this light right here. It came in, you plugged it in the wall, and it came in as electrical energy, and it comes up here, and this filament actually causes it to burn, and that gives out light. So the form that is coming out is it came in as electrical, and it leaves by light. However, if you've ever tried to change a light bulb uh, while it's plugged in, it's very, very hot. So in addition to the light energy, it's also giving off thermal energy. So you can see where electrical energy has been changed, converted to thermal, which is heat and light energy. And the same thing over here with a blow dryer. Now the thing about a blow dryer is in addition 
it changes it to sound energy. We're going to talk about kinetic energy in a moment. That's moving of the wind. Uh, but the sound energy, you don't want the sound energy, but it is being created, and we'd like to make it so that they're efficient enough that it only creates the thermal energy and the kinetic moving of the wind energy. What is a joule? A joule is the amount of energy we expend as work if we apply a force of one newton. Remember the force of one newton? That's about lifting your cell phone up a meter. This is over a distance of a meter. So we could say joules, or we could say newton meters, or we could say kilograms, meters squared over seconds squared. A lot of things we can say, but that's what we say joule. And about approximately, it's one joule is about how much energy it would take to lift that great big hamburger about nine inches to your mouth. Joules can be referred to for electricity also. We haven't gotten into electricity yet, but when we do, we're going to be using joules. So joules are measurement of the energy expended, that means used, in passing an electrical current of one ampere through a resistance of one ohm for one second. And again, this doesn't make sense now because we haven't talked about this stuff, but it will when we get to electricity. So joule is a way of saying this is how much energy it's going to take to do the job that needs to be done. So who was this guy? Well, James Prescott Joule. He lived in the 1800s. He was an English guy, physicist and brewer, who experimented with heat, and he proved heat is a form of energy. Until that time, there were lots of weird notions about what heat exactly was. He wasn't taken that seriously during his lifetime. He had a hard time people taking him seriously. But he did some great experiments, and they said, no, 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 these experiments aren't correct. And he says, yes, they are. He had access to the brewery, which is very sophisticated equipment at that time for the, compared to what you might have in a lab. So he was able to prove it to a nice level that uh, not a lot of people could replicate in their labs. As a kid, though, he was also fascinated with electricity. And he and his brother experimented by giving electric shocks to each other and to the family servants. Yikes! And I don't think I'd want to be around with him then. The machine for measuring work is over here to the right. You would bring heat, and the heat would cause the water to move around, and then that would cause the paddle to move around, and that would cause this string. It was kind of ingenious how he would do that. And then that would cause this weight to either go down or rising up, depending on what uh, was going on with the heat. One of the common appliances that we talk about joules. A 100 watt light bulb, that's the brighter light bulbs that you might have in your room and you've got it on for one hour, that uses about 360,000 joules. Running a typical hair dryer for about 15 minutes uses about 900,000 joules. So it takes almost a million joules for a hair dryer 15 minutes. That's why if you're trying to cut back on energy, your hair dryers, uh, any kind of clothes dryers, any kind of heat element really takes a lot of energy. Energy comes in two forms. Energy comes in two forms. We talk about it as potential energy, which is another way of saying stored energy, and kinetic energy, which is a way of saying moving energy. Those are the two forms, kinetic and potential. You can see in this diagram that the, it converts. So here we have the bicyclist going up the hill. Down here, we're going to say there's zero potential energy, and then they're adding energy in the system, and they're adding energy by burning calories. So you don't get something for nothing. So you burn those calories, and you put energy into the bike, and then up here, the act that you're, the fact that you're on this hill uh, means that you have potential energy, and that's stored energy. That means you have the potential to create energy. Just as food has the potential to create energy, well, your placement... Uh, up above height has the potential to create energy. And then as you go downhill, of course, you don't have to exert too many uh, calories to go downhill. You let gravity do it, and that's the energy out. So it's converted into moving energy, which is kinetic energy. When we talk about the total energy in the system, 
what we are talking about is mechanical energy. That's just the word they give mechanical energies they're, when they're talking about potential energy plus kinetic energy. Um, that would be in comparison to chemical energy. So mechanical energy is when you're talking about the two forms of energy we're most likely to use potential and kinetic energy and then you put them together and you call it mechanical energy. And it's due to position when we talk about mechanical energy we talk about position and motion just like this bicycle is going up and down the hill. So mechanical energy is the sum of potential and kinetic energies, including frictions. It's often abbreviated as total mechanical energy, TME. You read chapter four, it has all this information on there, plus a little extra. As always, we can't go over everything in the book. You are expected to read that book. It's not that difficult. I had to read it myself quite a few times, and it's not bad at all. I enjoy some of the parts. So make sure you read chapter four and watch the upcoming videos on kinetic energy and potential energy. Bye.